actively looking at the PO app, so we are going to get started here. Um, if you are joining us, please follow along with the slides in the Zoom. Um, and we are going to kick it off right now. Uh, next slide, please, Shifty. So the, uh, the agenda today, um, similar to all of our governance calls, we're going to go over all of our proposals from proposals that have recently passed to our proposals that are up for vote right now, and then proposals that are in ideation, followed by proposals that have just started on the forum post. And then after that, if we have any time left over, we can do kind of a Q&A, or even if someone would like to propose something here that can make its way to a forum post. Um, next slide, please. Um, and I'd also like to remind you guys to take a look at Never Was's gov uh, community governance tracker. Um, it's a really, really great tool that keeps getting updated um, every day. Um, and it's got some really good new assets and features um, that are monitoring the community favorability or how interactive different posts are getting. So thank you very much to Never Was for um, creating this and keeping this up. Um, and it looks like you've got some really great ideas in your forum post too about organization and um, communication about metrics and how things are going. So if it's anything like this that you've been doing for us now, I'm really excited to see what can come of that. <laughs> All right, uh, next slide, please. And we'll jump into our um, past proposals. Um, and our first past proposal is uh, from PeakCoin. Um, PeakCoin um, passed both of his proposals for marketing and growth. So. Pete, if you're in the audience, would you want to jump up on here and give everyone an update on what the next steps are now that um, you've passed your proposal? No, Pete. Well, um, looks like we don't have Pete on right now. Um, if he joins later, we'll give him the stage so he can let everyone know what's going on with um, the marketing and growth and where we might find the next meeting or update from them. Um, so if we could skip down to the next slide that is not Pete Coin, We are at um, Outraged Humans proposal also passed for extending the fox farming on Uniswap. Um, and that had 4.05 million votes. So really, really great showing there. Um, so excited about that, Outraged Human. Do you happen to be on the call, Outraged Human? I, I can monologue this my whole way through if need be, but I'd love to see someone else join it with me. Nope. Looks like, looks like everyone who's passed is already deep working on the things that have passed. So we'll, we'll look for some updates. And if they join the call a little bit later, we'll give them the stage to allow them to communicate um, next steps on what's going on there. So I do know, Tyler, that the next steps on that are actually primarily engineering related to get everything set up um, a little bit product. So maybe maybe actually Josh could just get an update of what engineering is already doing to make that proposal happen. Yeah, that sounds great, John. Hey, everybody. Yeah, so that's correct. We, we've already, the, the core dev team has gathered. We've had quite a few meetings about, well, kickoffs, I guess you should say about this, and the work is now actively underway. What we're doing is we are going to add, we're taking advantage of the fact that we, this, it'll be a new contract, right? Uh, well, it's not, we can't just extend the existing contract. So instead of just adding the ability to interact with this one other contract, we are pulling out, uh, creating an abstraction layer so that we can more easily add future contracts as well. So it's gonna take us a little bit more work than just adding one more specific contract for our users to interact with. And we're doing that in both the mobile code base, <clears throat> excuse me, and the fox.shapeshift.com code base. And we do have some community support or uh, 420 Coop in particular, 
who's been one of the more active community devs is helping us on the webs in the open source web side of things. So that's pretty cool that we're, we're bringing a community dev in to help get that work done. And then the idea is it's going to be very easy to port over once we have enough wallet support in the web v2 repo, the future of Shapeshift, it's going to be pretty easy to port the code over from the fox.shapeshift.com into that interface to be able to interact with multiple earning contracts. So that's what we're doing to actively underway now. Awesome, Josh. That sounds sounds like going from proposal to getting it implemented is um, going to be pretty quick and easy. Yeah, it, well, it's going to be some, right, we'll, we'll have, because we're doing this abstraction layer work, it, it's going to be a couple of weeks. It's not just, you know, one week of work, but yeah, it's, there's a hard deadline, right? And we really want to make sure that we have incentives to keep the liquidity pools robust. So it's, pretty much the number one priority for the core dev team right now is to get this done. Um, sounds great. Um, well, I look forward to testing all of these features as you guys um, get them out there and ready in the wild. Um, cool. Sweet. Well, let's jump on to the next slide then now. Um, thank you, Josh, very much. Um, and we are now in uh, active proposals. So first on my slide deck here for active proposals, we've got Mr. Nerd Hair, um, his proposal is um, active, and you can vote on this now. Um, uh, Mr. Nerd Hair, you in the audience? Would you like to jump up here and chat for a little bit? I know we've talked a little bit about your um, proposal before; it's gone all the way to this stage, but looks like we're getting quite some community support for you. Uh, yes, and I'm I'm very grateful for that. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, the voting period on this is a little longer than most other proposals because boardroom was having API issues when I put it up. So I added a little extra buffer on the end just to make sure we'd be able to get that resolved before the thing closed. But uh, uh, I uh, so far haven't seen anyone vote no. So uh, that's very humbling. Thank you. And then Mr. Nerd Hair, is there a security kickoff that's already been scheduled or is there news where people can find out about that? Uh, I will post the security kickoff information in the security channel uh, shortly. The, uh, the I intended to have, to have a, a thing going on this week, but I had some personal issues that that you know rearranged my schedule somewhat. I'm also getting one of these Calendly things set up, so hopefully scheduling will be easier in the future. Um, I remain available as a resource for anyone who wants to learn more about how crypto works or, you know, how we secure our stuff or, you know, some sort of thorny engineering problem that you want answers on. Um, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Nerd Hair, um, for all that you do. Um, and we'll keep our eyes peeled for that announcement about the kickoff in that channel. And we'll echo that in larger channels so the community can be involved and um, see what security is getting into these days. Um, if we can hop to that next slide. Um, the next one up is our fair drop. So this is the follow-up to all DAO communities that got upset at us because they couldn't claim Fox because all of their LP tokens were staked um, or in governance currently, so they couldn't be um, seen inside our sweep. And Willie just jumped on stage. Um, do you like to chat about next steps for this guy? Yeah, thanks, Tyler. Hey, everybody. Hopefully, the sound quality isn't too bad. I'm uh, right now in a corner of Imcon with DeFi Cafe uh, listening in. So yeah, it uh, looks like this one actually just passed, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at 3 p.m. today, uh, 12 minutes ago, this officially passed on the soft forum. So uh, we will be doing the fair drop. And uh, also, just to give everyone an update on the development progress, uh, we really wanted to uh, do this fair drop as quick as we could and use in as, uh, with as minimal development effort as we could. So we're using the exact same front end uh, that we currently have for the original airdrop. And uh, as many of you guys know, there's a claim period for the airdrop. And on October 13th, the uh, value of the airdrop will start decaying. 
until it's completely paid on October 23rd, and the DAO will then be able to reclaim any unclaimed airdrops. So uh, we're, we want to line up with that same schedule um, so that uh, we don't have to make any other changes to the front end, and we can just proceed with the original airdrop plan as planned, and then just add in this additional list of eligible addresses. So um, we want to do this as quickly as we can so that the eligible addresses uh, have as much time to claim as possible. So our plan right now, I think we're on track to do this tomorrow. That's what we're aiming for, is to actually just launch the fair drop tomorrow and uh, let everybody know in these communities uh, they're eligible to claim. So working with the marketing work stream and the support work stream uh, to promote this and to update help desk articles. Um, and everyone should be prepared for another wave of uh, community members uh, as soon as we announce this, joining the Discord. and. Uh, being excited and learn, wanting to learn how to contribute. So uh, the, the contract for this has actually already been deployed. Elmo deployed the contract for this. Uh, the security work stream also audited the list that Nick Chad has generated. So we're really ready to go for this. Now that the proposal is passed, we just need to, uh, right now, uh, another engineer, Sterl, is adding the airdrop, the list of eligible addresses to the Redis that the front ends are currently checking to see if somebody's eligible. And once that's done, uh, we'll be ready to pretty much fund the airdrop contract and announce it. So stay tuned. But the goal is to do this as soon as tomorrow. Nice. Um, that's super exciting, Willie. And if Josh's stuff was quick and easy, this is <laughs> even more quick and easy. So that's that sounds like um, that uh, we've got some exciting news to be looking out for tomorrow, um, if all goes well. And um, I hope that all of the marketing and everything can coalesce so we can have a really great launch with this fair drop. Um, thanks, Willie. You bet. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, about it. yeah thanks, community. Let's be fair. Um, can we hop to that next slide then? And this is um, the Ichi um, proposal. And I know I saw some conversations around this happening. And I'm not sure if we have anyone from the Ichi um, uh, DAO here in the on the call if they aren't. Um, Mr. Nerd here is hopping up. I know that he can give a little bit of a synopsis about what his concerns were with the proposal, and I'm pretty sure that the proposal got pulled to address some of those things. Yeah, the, the, the main concern here that I have is procedural. It, it's not Ichi's fault. It's just because our, our process isn't like, you know, we're, we're working we're working through these growing pains. The uh, uh, during the ideation phase, I, I brought up some some concerns about the proposal not being sufficiently specified, and to to alleviate that, they deployed the contract. Uh, but I didn't find out the address of the contract till yesterday, so I wasn't actually able to do security review on it uh, yet. So there's a delay associated with that, uh, and I appreciate the EG folks for working with me. Um, I'll be producing a, a report that indicates what the one Fox contract actually does and what the risk profile uh, of the token from the perspective of our DAO and from the perspective of token holders is. It's a little bit of a different question than is, does the thing have bugs in it? It's not a security audit uh, as much as a, a, a granular examination of the specification. You know, we, we need to know what the thing does and I'll, Ping you all when I have a report. Uh, I think Tyler may have died. I can, hey, I couldn't. Hey, hey. I couldn't find my mute button, apologies. I gave a really nice uh, thank you, <laughs> um, but that was hidden. Um, I'm back now. Um, um, so now that I'm back and I'm not dead, uh, if we could get Pete on stage, I saw him jump into the, the audience there and we skipped over his slides, but if we could go back there, I'd love to get an update from Pete Goyne and congratulations on passing both of your proposals. and. Um, We'd love to hear a little bit of info about what's coming up next. Uh, yeah, sure. Can everybody hear me? Hello? Yep. Hear you loud and clear. 
Fantastic. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, so upcoming for the marketing growth work stream is uh, uh, we're going to try to be growing in many directions at once. Um, of the most important things, um, we have the Sushi Swap AMA, which we're prepping for tomorrow. Uh, props to Giant Can and Hunt. We've got a really uh, smooth little onboarding um, flow that we're probably going to start replicating as sort of standard uh, practice moving forward, where a Twitter announcement leads to a specific channel here that's read only. Um, so people have to join our Discord first and then be hey, Pete, to our Hey, Pete. It sounds like you're moving away from the mic, so we can't really hear you. You're really faint. So if you are, you might want to move a little bit closer. Wait a minute. Is the hold That's on? That's better One right sec. there. Hold on. Does this change anything? Yeah, that, that sounds just made, Yeah. Okay, it was my computer's microphone and my headphones. I don't know why Discord does that. All right, you can hear me. I'm walked away from the computer. Um, so you're perfect. The, uh, so yeah, we have uh, we've started a flow where we're going to create read only a read only channel that's open for the time of the promotion. People are then directed to our Discord, so the opportunity to join our Discord is there, and then they are then directed to the Sushi AMA. Um, so big shout out to Hunt and Giantkin for helping us set that up. Lindsay Liu for for doing the copy editing, Toasty for putting it all together. Um, the next big thing is the fair drop. Um, the the thing, the proposal just passed uh, today, 21 minutes ago. Um, so marketing is not ready to launch the fair drop tomorrow. Um, we, the airdrop announcement uh, to, to help the community understand was like one of the single biggest gravity moments in Shapeshift history. And it drove a massive amount of adoption. I'd be willing to bet that many of you joined this discord because of that airdrop announcement. And so we would like to design a more integrated approach that uh, mimics at best and improves on, or mimics at least and improves on the previous um, the previous airdrop announcement. Uh, this sort of stuff is fantastic PR opportunities for us, um, and so we are going to take our time to get this done right. That's not to say it's going to take weeks, um, but we do want to make sure that an announcement of this gravity is handled correctly. Um, so we that is the next big thing on our uh, agenda moving forward. Um, the third thing then is to start building out the infrastructure that we promised in the Workstream proposal. So starting this Monday, uh, this upcoming Monday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we're going to start this crazy DAO experiment of we want to have an open public meeting on a weekly basis that we invite everybody to come in and we need ideas and we want to execute. We have a bounty budget that we want to start applying and we need to start building in all directions. I see a vision of this DAO being able to spider out in many different ways all at once so that there is a uh, multiplicative effect that you know cannot be replicated in centralized companies. And so I highly encourage, in fact, beg you all to join the call at 3 p.m. on Monday, because that is when we start this, this crazy experiment. If done right, we should be able to grow faster than any centralized company ever could and reward the community for doing so. Um, so those are the big, big things that are on our plate. Uh, in the near future. And we um, encourage you all to frequently check the uh, public marketing chat. We're gonna be doing most of our uh, talking in that chat so you can stay right alongside us every step of the way. And please don't hesitate to jump on in there and um, speak your speak your thoughts and pitch your ideas. We, we want them all. Uh, Pete, you got me all hyped. I'm excited. Um, that's gonna be a fun call. It's going to be nuts. Please excuse any like struggles that we have early on. You know, it's it's going to be an absolutely insane <laughs> process that we're going to try to wrangle. Um, but we really want to, you know, go jump with both feet in. We need everybody's help. Well, I'm sure we've got a whole bunch of community members that are extremely interested in the marketing side of things and getting us having us peel the curtain back too. So. Um, I hope we see a lot of attendance at that call, and I know I will be there. Hey, great. Hey, Pete, this is uh, Josh here. I um, uh, like the idea of leveraging the fair drop to 
gather some more attention and create some more gravity for us. Do remember that it is already set with a defined end date of October 13th is when the decay starts right alongside the current airdrop. So if we wait too long, we're not going to give people long enough to claim. So got to balance that out a little bit, I think. I did read the proposal. So I have a question about that. I did read the proposal and I did not see a defined start date. Um, yeah, I don't think there is a defined start date. Yeah, there's no defined start date because the start date is kind of just ASAP. But we did include in the proposal, like what Josh said, that there is a defined end date. So just keep in mind, we understand, and I definitely appreciate yeah. the, the desire to maximize the uh, effectiveness of this announcement. But yeah, just, just making sure that we balance and make sure that we do give people enough time to, to still claim. So I appreciate that you guys recognize there's still some emergency. Hopefully, yeah. Next week, we could potentially announce this. The intention is obviously to get it going as as fast as possible. Um, we've uh, the marketing team, including the centralized one. So again, shout out to the still centralized foxes for jumping on on extremely short notice. We've already had a um, chat about it about how we may want to um, circle the wagons and get those things uh, together. Um, and so we do hope to move really, really quickly on it. But at the same time, um, you know, this is this is a announcement that we we have to get right. I don't think there's any anybody who would feel otherwise. So um, we ask for we ask for patience, but we understand the uh, gravity and the urgency of the request. I do hear that. On the flip side, I would say that uh, an MLP for this could just be tweeting. And if we were to put a tweet out about this, and it would get picked up by the the proper spread uh, press. So again, I think it's about finding just the, the proper balance there. And I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable if we waited past next week to promote this. Uh, yeah. Okay. The other thing that I would just pose as an idea, Pete, is that if it means you can get this announcement together sooner maybe delay that first community call until the plan for this is out and announced. I'm just afraid of creating a whole bunch of excitement and then starting to work on other things when this one is really time sensitive. That's a suggest a possibility, something to think about. Um, yeah, I, I hear all that. Uh, I think that to address Willie's, um, to address Willie's comment, uh, we, you know, after talking with Lindsay, who was, you know, sort of a, a huge part of our first launch, um, you know, her exact words were, if we need media, it wants, we need it to be one big announcement, preferably with no dribbling out in advance, complete with web page and et cetera. And we want to do like social Twitter, email and PR efforts, and then possible, possibly bountying out with members of the community with a pre-approved message to go and join uh, these communities' discords in order to announce it within their discord itself. So I don't think this will take a long amount of time to get right, um, but I don't want uh, I don't want to be in a situation where um, the pressure to get it out quickly leads to an ineffective launch when this was obviously so influential the first time around. Um, and so I really uh, I really want to do this correctly. And so I, we, I do very much understand the urgency. And if we have to push off that Monday call, we will. Um, and so just want to, I guess, put that out there that we are fully aware of how big of a gravity uh, shift this is and, and what it could do for the community. And we want to make sure that we leverage it to the maximum amount while keeping in mind that, you know, we need to do it in a quick fashion. Thanks, Bitcoin. Appreciate you guys. Some thanks for all the clarity on all of that. And uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be a, a really awesome launch for us. So we just need to make sure we get everyone on the same page. So it sounds like we're going to be doing that um, in this card over the next couple of days. Um, if we could hop onto that slide with Homer Simpson on it, Shifty. Um, ideation is currently broken in boardroom. Um, and big thanks to LPX for identifying this issue and working with both the boardroom team and the ceramic team to really knock, dial into what's going on here and see if this is uh, our problem or what's going on. There's a GitHub link here inside the slides that if you want to check it out um, when the slides are posted, you can see exactly what's going on with um, the ceramic devs and what needs to be fixed so we can get boardroom up and running again. 
Um, we don't have a current ETA on this, but right now there is a fix where we are using the forum posts um, for the ideation process. It does not allow the same sort of voting uh, signals that you get from snapshot or boardroom, but it is something that we are using in the interim. You can see all the details about that in the Discord or in some of the forum posts that we're going to be looking at here in a little bit. So um, if we look at that next slide, we're about to jump into posts that are either in ideation or in the forum posts about to go to ideation. So as we bring people up on stage as well, this is a great time to ask questions of folks. So please raise your hand if you've got a question as we go through this. We're going to take this kind of a page at a time. If you see a project up here and you gave your presentation last time about all of the details, please try and leave some of the stage space for those that have maybe proposed um, since the last call or didn't get the same amount of stage time. So um, if there's anyone on this first page of the Diggy, LPX, Volley, or Marley, and you'd like to come give us some updates, please raise your hand and I will get you up on the stage. We'll wait just a second to see an invite sent to Diggy. Diggy wants to jump up there. Hey, Diggy. Hey, sorry about that. I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do next. Um, yeah, so we had the deep dive in with Pendo yesterday, um, and the proposal is on the forum. You can upvote it or downvote it there. Um, I think we're going to, it needs at least five days there. So probably sometime next week, we will move it over uh, into boardroom. Uh, and hopefully boardroom will be working. Um, but yeah, I have nothing else to add. Uh, if anybody has any other questions about it, feel free to ask, or you can post your questions on the post in the forum. Awesome. Thanks, Diggy. And if you're looking for a recording of that call, um, it is all detailed with the slides inside the recorded meetings channel. Thank you. Um, anyone have any questions about Pendo or anything like that? Um, I'm trying to get LPX up on the stage here as well. I see your hand raised and I'm clicking invite to speak, but it's not bringing you up here. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Uh, LPX, you need to accept the invite to speak on your end if Tyler sent it to you. Right here, let me try one more time. How's that LPX? See if you can accept that one. He said in the stage chat to give him a second because he has to connect a mic and won't let him accept it until he connects the mic. Yeah, I do know he just recently got a mic. Um, well, to uh, give a little bit of an intro here, LPX um, has been working really closely on this. Um, liquidity mining for HoneySwap die, And we had another person actually just join uh, the forum post and bring a whole bunch more insight into details that hadn't been outlined there. So I'm sure we've got plenty of updates we'll be able to get from LPX. Hey, LPX. Hey, what's up, guys? So I actually don't have that much to update you guys on because um, my counterpart is pretty sick right now, I think. Unfortunately, so hopefully I'll have uh, more info next week. Right. Um, I did see that there was a whole bunch of new um, conversations and ideas about things to be concerned about with this that were brought up um, by, uh, what is it, Kyle, I believe, was the person who posted on there. So I'm really excited to see further developments um, that go out down in here. Um. Yeah, I think um, he brought up some pretty good points about trying to align both of the organizations' best interests. So 
Yeah, I'm definitely excited to hear what he has to say as well. Great. Well, um, if anyone's got any ideas about this, this is the best time to jump into the forum and give more feedback to LPX. Um, and we hope that we can get this one moved over into proposals as soon as we can get some more signaling from the community that this sounds like the, the place where we want to be with this idea. If we can jump on down to the next slides, we've got a whole bunch of people that have made some forum posts and there's a whole bunch of new ones. So um, if you see your name on here again, let's go ahead and raise some hands and we'll bring you up and give you a couple minutes to talk about your um, individual proposals. Hey everybody, I'll just talk my, about mine really quick because there's not a lot to talk about at this point, but I posted a high level budget for the engineering work stream. It's posted in forum and I am gonna, I'll be putting on the calendar a community call on Monday or Tuesday of next week, just to be able to walk through it some and answer any questions that people have. So that's all I wanna say about it for now. Thanks. Awesome, thanks Josh. Um, yeah, I look forward to see a little more detail on those numbers. Um, never was, I know there's been a whole bunch of conversations going on in Discord about your post. Um, and some good feedback as well. I'd love for you to provide some some insight into uh, your proposal um, here. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of talking about it today, but as you can imagine, I've been fielding questions for quite some time. Um, yeah, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to say the call earlier uh, it was very helpful in my respect of how I kind of view the, the DAO and and how uh, leadership will work in roles and, and so forth. So really, um, I know that my proposal is pretty long and it has a detail page that some people uh, weren't getting uh, the details, I guess, that I was expressing from it. So a uh, further explanation will definitely be uh, forthcoming um, as these discussions and conversations continue. Um, but basically, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking to propose a uh, work stream that is uh, for the DAO's uh, organization's health and overall well-being, uh, providing resource uh, to help you know uh, work stream leaders transition from a centralized role to this new role, uh, help new work stream leaders that may never have had um, the ability to work in this new and exciting venture, um, help uh, role members, you know, um, become better role members, uh, help work streams find new members, identify uh, necessary needs, um, communicate those needs to the community, um, help integrate the transition of, uh, you know, the foundation with decentralization, with centralized assets that now exist in the organization. So helping them bring those um, communication channels and the ability of transparency to show the community what is happening, why it's happening, what's out there, what's needed, what's, you know, uh, why things are happening, they, where the way that they're happening and so forth. Um, also, I mean, obviously I, I posted a, a statement of work on SOW. Um, and attach that are milestones and um, the way that uh, this is kind of proposed is it works through milestones, uh, achievement based, um, would set you know uh, goals and steps and process to accomplishing these uh, once they are met um, as laid out uh, in in the, the statement of work, they then are funded. Um, so it's kind of a different uh, transition to the normal pay of, you know, or the normal funding of, you know, we ask for a, bu a budget up front that lasts for 90 days or 60 days or how many days that are determined. And then, you know, those funds are held and given out uh, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, however the work stream decides. Um, this this uh, proposal is based uh, purely in Fox uh, currently in the budget request um, and uh, payment in Fox obviously has its own um, 
concerns and things that we have to work through as a community. Um, so I'm looking at, you know, ways of addressing this and finding ways that uh, work the most effective. Obviously, I can't say that I have got that 100% down. This is a very fluid um, proposal. And I, I, I know that it causes some consternation from some members that it is so fluent. Uh, but I, I see this work stream as changing as needed and determined by the DAO's needs going forward. So the DAO may not know what is needed uh, next month or next three months or 90 days or 120 days or whatever. So this, this uh, work stream is built to be very adaptable and modular to uh, effectively meet those challenges and address those challenges as they come up. Um, in the first uh, work sta uh, statement of work, uh, everyone can see it's basically based on, and I think I even titled it, building blocks. Um, so basically, this is just meant to be, you know, establishing the building blocks uh, to build on for future needs. Um, I've already, you know, started playing with some ideas, uh, very uh, preliminary with the, you know, second statements of work, uh, like living with the DAO. Um, helping people that are, you know, working through the DAO or with the DAO, you know, um, do things uh, going forward. Um, these statements, uh, these milestones that are in these articles are just my ideas at the moment. Uh, they're not, I'm not saying that these are what the community has to do. I'm just suggesting ideas that I have seen that may have a need, a determined need and suggesting them. Uh, please, anyone and everyone, feel free, you know, to um, communicate to me, uh, you know, different uh, envisions and ideas and stuff like that. I, I'm not saying that it's my way or the highway at all. That's nothing that has to do with this work stream at all. This work stream is not meant to be, you know, um, it has to be done this way. This is a work stream that is about problem solving pathway, um, you know, uh, finding pathways to meet the DAO's determined goals. So uh, I will be quiet at this point and allow anyone else to talk. I'm sure I talk way too long. No, I don't think you talked too long at all, never was. And thank you for that that dive into that. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions about that. I'm sure we'll have more. Oh, John, it uh, looks like you just hopped up on here. Yeah, I don't. Uh, so I would just point people to that. You know, there was a good discussion going with Never Was in the proposal discussion channel, and also some good discussion on the forums. Um, as I kind of said to you there in the discussion, Never Was, yeah. I, I, your, your high level idea. Sorry, I'm going to tweet this person if they're not. Um, thank you. Um, I think the high level idea is good, but. And I'm okay with a work stream being adaptable and changing uh, over time. But what I'm not okay with, or what I'm still trying to get clarity on, is just this general idea of what exactly its goals are. And I don't personally think a work stream can have, you know, any goal. Like it needs some some sort of defined limits, in my opinion. Or I don't understand why it would be a work stream. And I know that that's something you were trying. We we were trying to work through in the discussion. So none of this is to say that it shouldn't move forward. But I would just really like to see some more definition because otherwise, it, I mean, if it's, if it's just going to do kind of whatever, I'm not sure why we need a work stream for that, or that could be kind of organized by bounties as needed. So I'm still a little confused as to exactly what the purpose of the work stream is. And I'd, I'd like to see that more defined as it moves through the process. Yep, uh, understood. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate the the amount of discovery that's being embraced by Never Was in this, and I, it sounds like we may have some more discovery to get to the point of being able to utilize that discovery in the right ways. Um, but I think that these are really healthy discussions to help shape this in the right way. So I'm excited to see um, how we can forge this unification need into something palpable in a proposal. Um, so thank you very much, Never Was. Thanks again for the time, guys. I didn't expect to be up here so soon, being that, being that I just uh, released it last night. So thanks. Yeah, no, this call is great for that. This is perfect for people who are just getting started to get the, the valuable feedback to make sure we can 
polish up all of the ideas and make them into the the nice neat proposals that we'd like to see later on. So thank you very much for jumping up on stage and talking in front of everyone today. Um, all right, and Brian, looks like you uh, you made it all the way up on the stage. We had Mr. Nerd Hair talk a little bit about um, the security contract and the process that's, or the, the smart contract and the process that we've got from the security team about um, how it's a little difficult with our voting process. And maybe you can elaborate on, on what's going on from your guys' end and how we can get to where we need to be. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I mentioned that I missed that. I had some calls with partners. Um, so I last spoke to all of you a week ago, I believe. And at the time we were in ideation, uh, we had strong uh, support in ideation with two issues raised uh, during this last call. One was that the contract wasn't live yet. Uh, so we took it upon ourselves to deploy it at our own expense. But that, while that, that may not seem like a big deal, it is several thousand dollars. Uh, so we put the contract out there. Uh, the second was that maybe just a general sense that you know funds shouldn't be sent to another DAO or some un level of discomfort with that. We agreed the funds backing Stable Fox uh, belong to the Shapeshift DAO. Uh, it's ideal for us if they're never in our control. So we named six signers, uh, four of which are from the Fox DAO in a uh, three out of six multi-sig. Uh, that way, while we could assist with creating transactions, we couldn't actually sign or execute any. The, the funds would never leave the control of the Shapeshift DAO. So with those two changes, we posted a new final proposal, uh, I guess about 24 hours ago, um, and new concerns were brought up. One was that we put a voter participation award in there. Uh, now that was something we had learned in participating in Bancor governance. Uh, we we did not add it late to you know get around any rules, but just because if you tell everybody it's coming, you can get Sybil attacked where people split wallets trying to collect multiple rewards. Uh, you know, you, it just becomes harder to execute. Again, this was $80 roughly to just consider the proposal. If you voted no, you would get the funds. If you voted yes, you would get the funds. Again, just to uh, as appreciation for looking at it. We don't, we've done plenty of proposals in other communities without it. We've done plenty with it. The participation rate is usually 20 to 30% higher if it's there. Since you weren't uh, reaching quorum, we thought that might be helpful. So we added it, but we're happy to take it out. So we'll, we'll post a new proposal without it. And the second thing was that now it appears there is this uh, security review process we didn't know about. So we'll, um, I uh, give a couple of days for that to take place before we repost. So that's the update from my end. Awesome. Thank you, Brian, for all of that, um, all of those updates across the, the whole th proposal there. And um, thank you for working with our security team and, and, and the community to make sure we can get exactly what we want out of this. Yeah, I want to echo that. Uh, I, I, th it's, my concerns here are, are mainly procedural, and uh, I, I just need some time to look at the thing so that we can make sure the proposal is specified properly. And I, 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 I don't think this has anything to do with anything to do with itchy specifically. It's just somebody was going to run up against this particular uh, uh, underdevelopment in our governance process at some point. Well, decentralized governance is um, messy and weird, so. And no worries. Uh, you guys have been better than most. Well, thanks for sticking through the messy and the weird with us. No problem. Thanks. Hey, hey sorry, Tyler. I jumped I jump back up just because um, 
I wanted to uh, just bring up, it has nothing really to do with this individual proposal. Um, it's more of a community um, concern and, and topic that I brought up, um, but it just happened to be attached because of this conversation. Uh, in the proposal discussion, uh, there's a thread about incentivized voting. And um, I, I kind of was uh, talking with uh, Brian about this a little bit yesterday. And just uh, like I said, it's just a concern that I have um, as a community member and, and as for the community itself of kind of going down um, this process. Um, so, I mean, feel free, anyone who wants to take a look at that, I'll leave it as that. It's a thread that's sitting in there for anyone who wants to read. I think it does close though soon because uh, I only did it for 24 hours. But anyways, um, and also I saw PD coin, you said that uh, you asked for a little bit of a question about the overlap um, of my work stream that I had proposed. So I don't know if everyone heard the call earlier um, today, um, but uh, you know, like I said, I kind of align a lot with what was said during that call. Um, I find the concept of uh, carve out or an overlap as a causation for problems more so related to uh, ownership roles uh, or ownership titles versus roles to where if you are saying that this is my domain, this is my carve out and anyone who impedes on it, you know, um, it has to stand back 10 steps. We can't allow for that. Um, I'm not saying that this is what's being said. I'm just saying that philosophy is kind of the you know, traditional model that you have a department, you have a department head, you have department members and they are in control of their domain and everything like that. Um, I'm seeing, you know, overlap is not as a, as a problem, but more so as a safety net to help uplift everyone else to uh, whether it's offloading responsibility, um, at learning and, and providing assets to allow people to do their jobs better, more effective and more efficient and, and stuff like that. So I see overlap as, I don't, sorry, I don't see it as overlap. I see it as more so a support system that's built in for all the work streams and for the community and for the foundation and for everyone else. Um, I know everyone keeps asking for a very quick and easy summary of what this entails and how I go about doing it. Um, you know, this, this, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know if I have a micro answer for everyone. Everyone thinks they, you know, they want a very micro specific answer. And I'm more so thinking in a macro level of the DAO uh, as an organization itself and where does it go and how does it get there and how do we strengthen it and how do we find the tools and build the tools to build that strengthening process uh, and uplifting of it. So, uh, sorry, I went in along again. Sorry, but I'll let it go. Hey, no, this is great. Never was. Um, I think we'll probably end up, it sounds like there's a lot of opinions about this. So, um, it may end up being something that gets a lot of traction in something like the incubation channel. Um, so we can really hone in and keep kind of an open, flexible scope while also defining clear goals within that. So I think there's a middle ground we can we can find through this. So thank you for um, staying on your soapbox and being so passionate about your project. Um, and also thank you, Brian, for giving us all of those details and um, working with, every, with the community on all of our requests. I know it's not easy. So thank you guys both. Um, we're running a little bit low on time here and I wanted to make sure we got a fair chance for everyone to speak up. Um, I saw in the stage chat that Gray Machine had to run to another meeting, but he's had two proposals on here in the forum post for a while that got skipped over last time. And uh, these proposals um, are more so about stuff that he's already created and trying to find some more information about how people perceive the Discord and what its uses and functionality is inside our DAO. So if anyone has some feedback that they would like to give, towards the content that Gray Machines are already creating, which is phenomenal. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the NFT he created for the party that was last night, but he's making some really great work here. Um, but he's also trying to pull the community so he can continue to shape information for the Shapeshift Discord and things like that. So please, 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 if you get a second to, this is not as um, the same sort of uh, host as a proposal, but it's really beneficial for us to get some feedback um, on stuff like that. Um, do we happen to have D 
DeFi Dave in the house or um, PTT. I know these were things that didn't get very much um, traction last call um, and DeFi Dave's proposal just went up. So, hey, Ron. This is PTT, so. How's it going? My name and, good, how are you? Doing um, well. I just thought I'd step up and talk about the uh, pre-proposal discussion I submitted. Um, so something I've noticed is there's always off, often a lot of questions about costs and stuff, and I think that establishing some sort of guidelines and or a budgeting committee or um, something that lives in another work stream would be helpful with buy-in from each of the different work streams. Um, so I think that each each one has probably a little bit of everyone that needs to be involved with. And then that way, everyone has input into building out those guidelines for future uh, work stream leaders. If you were to step down or if uh, Pete was to step down in the future, then the next person would have guidelines already established. And it would create some best practices and other things and also be involved with each proposal going forward. And it wouldn't be a full time work stream because obviously there's not always going to be proposals going through. But it would definitely be, I think, a part-time one where I think it would be something that would take some amount of time and resources in order to implement. Um, I'm just looking to for the discussion to see if there is value in this for the DAO as a whole and what direction people are thinking if this does have value. So I think it's I think it absolutely has value. And I think from the kind of the side conversations and things that are going on from never was this proposal. I think we've got a whole bunch of people in the community that are are on the same page view of trying to get some more organization and accountability for our efficiency and success here. So thank you for for staying on that and starting the conversation. Yeah, so if anyone wants to um, comment on that, I, I'll leave it up for a while. Um, I do have some polls on there that I would appreciate feedback to move forward with it. So. Thank you, guys. So, thank you so much, PTT. Um, do we have anyone else here on the call that's on this slide before we hop to the a whole another slide of forum posts? Um, if no, all right, let's move on to that next one. And this is some older ones here we've got. Um, we've got some repeats of people. If anyone's got any updates they'd like to share um, in these last couple of minutes from this slide here, we can go ahead and bring you up on stage. Um, <clears throat> I know I can com communicate on a couple of these things. I've heard that the Yearn um, proposal um, is going to have some updates once product and engineering are able to discuss the proper flow for this, whether it's going to be completely inside the product work stream or if we're going to be able to do bounties for the specifics of it. Um, so we should have an update from Chow maybe next week about this once they're able to talk with engineering. Um, and I did hop over to that pirate chain call the other day, and it sounds like we're gonna need to have some more community engagement across both communities before we can get everyone on the same page of what the work is going to look like and what the uh, motivation to get that done is going to require. Um, so um, it's exciting to see that there's two DAOs going on with this. And oh, looks like I have a hand raised and a, and a chow. What's up, chow? Hey guys. And Seth. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk briefly about the uh, pirate chain integration. So essentially the next step is to have a meeting here and invite them. So I'll be uh, trying to arrange that with the dev team uh, next week. Awesome. Yeah, um, please reach out to Hunt or Giantkin too. Both of them manage the community calendar and we can make sure that we get all of the announcements around that. Yeah, I tried to set up a straw poll today, or I'm sorry, a simple poll today to ask for what the best time was, but uh, I don't have enough privileges to make one. So that was unfortunate. I'll, I'll contact uh, Giantkin and uh, Hunt and work it out. Yeah, it's probably better just to have them schedule time. If you do a poll, you're going to find out you're not going to find something that works for everyone. So. Sometimes it's just better just to get it scheduled. OK, uh, I'll try that then. Awesome. Thanks for hanging on to this one, Seth, and for trying making sure that we get both communities connected. Yeah, sure, no problem. 
What's up, Chow? Hey, um, I always forget I have to leave Zoom in order to speak on here, else I it all unmutes. Um, I posted an update in the urine proposal, uh, but I've gotten some other feedback, so I might be doing, I'll probably be doing another update in the next day or two. Um, there's a couple pieces of engineering architecture that we need to get figured out um, first in order to get it urine integrated well. So I think that um, some of that needs to come first. Um, specifically, we need to get, uh, we need to be, we need to add a way for a user or for a dev to be able to add it easily into our um, system. All right. Um, Decap, did you want to add anything quickly? No, that pretty much summarizes it. We just want to put the architecture in place like we did for something like chain adapters before we put this up the bounty. Uh, and once we've got a better idea of the step of work, then we can like, look at that budget thing for us. That you pretty much. Awesome. Thanks, DeFi Cafe and Chow, for that update. Sounds like we're already starting to build a little bit of a priority queue of things, um, or define it at least. So um, hopefully we.